Hey everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with our first video for 2024. And we're kind of left in a bit of a quandary. So, last couple of weeks while recording's been kind of in a lull with the holidays and stuff, I've been doing a series of polls to determine what would be potentially the, the channel uh, featured deck list. Um, we were for, featuring for a little bit there the Rakdos scam list as we were trying to get the deck banned. Um, kind of as a joke thing, but did kind of give the channel a little bit of direction for a little bit. So I figured we'd try 12 different decks. Um, you know, we paired off things, Green Tron, Coffers, Creativity, uh, De Demir Death Shadow, Jun Saga, Wars of Scam, Humans, In Fact, Goblins, Hardened Scales, Affinity, and Enchantress. Um, all went through a series of polls. And the final ended up being... Humans versus Jun Midrange Jun Saga. Now, the problem this left me with is voting ended at the end of last night, and we ended up with a 17-17 tie. So this kind of left me with um, a bit of a decision to make. Do I just choose one or the other? Do I try to do a little bit of a, um exploration with both decks to see which one maybe I could... Uh, pilot a little bit better or have a little bit better feeling of so here we are starting with humans this is a list it's a couple weeks old so it may not be the most up-to-date humans list currently um, not that there's a ton of people working on humans in modern right now but it was a deck that i do believe either won a challenge or did well in a challenge and i know under and gucci and a few other people have played it um, they seem to have mixed results with the deck uh some were good, some were bad. The problem with humans has always been, like any tribal deck, obviously you have vulnerabilities to removal. Um, and you're very much a synergy snowball deck. So you're an aggressive deck that can get stopped by a myriad of different things from something as simple to, as a Tarmogoyf to your opponent's strategy just overpowering you, like Rhinos or living end or you could just fold to a bunch of removal out of say Rakdos scam or a deck like that um so the positives of humans as opposed to something like merfolk is humans is almost infinitely customizable in terms of hate cards hate bears um disruption for your opponent um anything like that uh humans has always been had a very good bag of tricks and it's just gotten better. Um, they have decent card selection, decent card advantage, including adding things like MT and Kilion to the list. Um, so, Humans is an intriguing deck, but whether it is truly modern power level kind of remains to be seen. Um, one of the decks in an unrelated thing I've been working on, some off-camera stuff has been Winota, um, which is not strictly a human's deck, but does share a lot of things in common with it and does have this you know, payoff in the form of Winota Joiner of Forces. But that deck, it, it shares some of the same problems. Um, vulnerability to removal. Uh, you have to have the, your kind of blistering fast starts of the deck struggles. Um, so, all that to be said, we're going to give it a try. We're going to give Jund a try. Um, and we're going to see which one feels better into the meta. I think that particular project will probably take us at least through the first couple weeks in January. And then we'll kind of maybe branch off from there. Either decide that one of these decks is the direction to go in, or both the decks are effectively unplayable and kind of go back to the drawing board um but like i said this is a humans list what makes humans powerful is blistering fast starts with just enough disruption to kill your opponent um four copies of ether vial 19 lands four noble hierarchs theoretically that is 27 mana pieces so you should theoretically be able to keep a reasonable hand and put your opponent under early pressure uh champion the parish is usually your best start you know, that or noble hierarch and then playing your myriad of two drops. Now, like I said, Humans has a bunch of different things. Coppercoat Vanguard's a newer one to the party. 
Uh, pumps your humans, make the other ones harder to kill. Kilion's a bit of a grindy card. Whenever you attack, uh, you reveal a top card of your library. If it's a creature card, man value three or less, put it in your hand. Uh, otherwise, put it in your graveyard. Um, Thalia's Lieutenant pumps the team, pumps itself. Whenever another human comes into play, much like Champion. NT is a somewhat tricky card to play um, in terms of using it correctly. Uh, you'll see in this league that I did definitely didn't utilize it the best, but it still is an interesting 2-2 creature that allows you to get some little bit of card advantage. Lavinia, um, I think this card is obviously the best when either Tron or Cascader are a huge part of the meta. Otherwise, it's a very middling beater. Um, another one of those various creatures that humans can either be a 5 or a 1. Uh, Jirini is good against graveyard nonsense. Nuke in the graveyard. Uh, can also kind of protect your creature, some very similar to something like Boromir. Uh, Anointed Peacekeeper is, you know, kind of a middling card. Uh, does make things more difficult to cast. It's kind of an elite Spellbinder-esque effect, but also taxes the activated abilities of those cards. Extraction Specialist is kind of for the grinding matchups, brings back one of your powerful one or two drops. Adeline, this is kind of the heavy hitter of the family. And then Reflector Mage. Um, helps clear the way of annoying creatures like Tarmogoyfs or Primeval Titans. Um, maybe even a Murktide region to buy you some time and then try to finish off your opponent. Megas is kind of hard tech because Amulet is such a good deck. Also helps against Tron and such. Three copies of Dismember for various different creatures you might want to kill. Um, the list could go on and on, but early Magavans, etc. Dauntless Dismantler, uh, this helps against the Artifact decks. Artifacts come into play tapped and then you can sack it to blow up. Uh, very similar to something uh, like a, uh, uh, what is the card from Legacy? Um, basically just XX, blow things up. Uh, mana value of X for artifacts. Usually you'll do this for zero against something like Harden Scales. Uh, Draenath Magistrate helps in the Cascade matchup, Sanctifier and Vec, uh, primarily when you're up against Scam and then Meddling Mage. Um, name specific cards, cards like Primeval Titan, uh, Crashing footfalls, etc., can help shut down strategies. But very much like many things, uh, this deck can be a house of cards. And if you don't have the beatdowns and you're relying on your hate pieces and they can answer your one or two hate pieces, then things get ugly very quickly. But that said, let's get into some matches and see how humans stacks up in the current modern meta. All right, we're here with match number one. Starting out 2024 with a bit of a quandary for our channel, but work through it um this hand seems fine two lands with a one drop in two curve so get to try out nt perhaps um so one thing uh that kind of left us in a quandary was the tie for the final poll so, I'm going to be trying out a couple leagues with humans and a couple leagues with Jun Saga and kind of see which one feels better and kind of go from there. Uh, both decks are a little underexplored in modern right now. Um, humans obviously doesn't see as much press as Jun Saga, but Jun Saga is. A reasonable deck. Um, I know that uh, guess we get NT rolling here. <clears throat> Could get Lavinia or roll Lavinia out, but that kind of tips our hand a little bit to our opponent, so. In here. I guess we'll pitch Vanguard. Sure. Should just pitch Extraction Specialist, it seems, because I forgot that they have Relic, because it's usually not relevant against us, but. Oh, Bluetron. Okay. I see, I see. Hmm. 
Repeal. Chalice on one, which ironically does absolutely nothing here, so. against them I guess could be okay dismember I'm not sure fracture mage could be relevant depends on what their uh, setup is honestly I think we go like this like they're unlikely to leave in uh, relic, but most of their a good bit of their removal can be exile based, depending on what all they're running, like Ugin and such. So I think we just bring in the three Magus and kind of call it a day, with the emphasis being on Ether Vial and Cavern. Um. Not the most exciting of curves, but at least kind of threatens to mess with their mana a little bit, especially if we draw a third land, which we do. So. We really want to draw one of our uh, if they get island or if they try to complete Tron here. I get island. Okay. Fair enough. hurts us and it's possible I should have gone for getting more power into play first
Vista, sure. <clears throat> Relic. Once again, irrelevant, but they left it in, so. We have no good attacks, and our opponent just kind of gets to take over the game. <clears throat> Good chance this just runs into a counter spell, but we'll see. Hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's got dismember, dismember, <clears throat> gut shot. English, as you can see, is worth not winning this game regardless, so. Alright, so... Smantler looks a little bit more interesting. Meddling Mage is... They have so many random threats in their deck that it's just kind of whatever. Um, we just kind of submit what we have. The problem with this hand is it's a bunch of three drops, no early pressure. So despite the presence of Cavern and Magus, I think we do have to mulligan. Um, this hand at least has uh, Aether Vial.
Uh, I kept natural throne. Coil engine, yay. So we pass. Only peacekeeper. I think that is a concession. So, yay! Not off to a good start. All right. So this is one of those hands that kind of like a burn hand is like a one land risky hand. If you rip a second land, this deck has a lot going for it, um, and we're on the draw. So I think we'll risk it especially since we have champion, which is arguably our most aggressive start, so. Humans is, like I don't like losing to mono blue Tron, but ironically I don't know that Jun Saga would have had a much better chance in that matchup. Um, I think game two being on the draw obviously hurt, and then, uh, Okay, cool. Um, well, looks like we're getting the gambit going here, so. Which could just get run over this game, unfortunately. Um, Cyborg, Megasus, and Meddling Mages, at least. Uh, Magistrate doesn't do mo. Oh boy. Well, okay, pretty sure we're dead here, but Bounce Lion Titan, we are just in fact dead. How's Lavinia technically worded? Can't cast non creature spells, no, I agree with number one, because I haven't played. I 
Well, it's not a land, but Let's valk it. Four mana for Karn. No, the one ring. Well, So what is our best play here? Uh, bounce land, so we die. Whoopsie! Guys, in Metal Mage, in Destruction Specialist, not really the matchup for it. <clears throat> um, Keyskeeper's fine. This mailer could be okay. This isn't really a grindy matchup per se. So maybe I take out the Killions rather than the uh, Intas. Okay, Vanguard. Da, 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 da. Okay, one lander that other than that doesn't really do anything. So can't keep the one lander. This hand is kind of equally terrible. Do you think we keep it though and put back Horizon for now? Inti at least theoretically lets us dig, so that's kind of why I kept it. <clears throat> it's possible if we should have gone to five looking for like meddling mage or something. Okay. Of course you do. E3 
leave there though. Kind of a little bit awkward, not on time. Attack with NT first. <laughs> Pretty sure none of this matters, but if for some reason our opponent doesn't kill us this turn, then. I love dying on turn three, don't you? All right, match <clears throat> number three. One lander can't keep. Okay. Seven lander, basically. Keep the back Trina and reflector mage for now. Fan freaking tastic. Fort Mana, which means they get to cast at one ring on turn two. Seriously, about to get turned too tightened. Nope, just turn to the one ring, which I think they could have saved an arboreal grazer there, so not really sure that I did what they did.
this. <laughs> uh. We are dead. Not surprising, but all right. That our meddling mage, Get down extraction specialist, Get down Kellyan. Um, and Lydia has worth <clears throat> so I should have vowed in the uh. Copper coat Vanguard, but we'll keep it and try. Basically, keeping this on the back of Angus of the Moon. And of course, they have basic forest because why wouldn't they, right? They still have two land drops to make. Um, <clears throat> now they have at least a forest in hand. So we'll see. One in a bounce land. Okay. 
You have dry it on top of all this bull crap? You do not. Okay. Really need to draw basic planes, or we just can't play much of a game of magic beyond these two being on the board. So. Here comes the one ring. Yeah, let me think about attacking with my 1, 2, and your 3, 2, because that makes perfect sense. Primeval Titan for Dryad. And moving on because we can't beat a uh, crawl worm basically. So moving in. All right, matchup number four. Hopefully. All right, we'll try this. And. Okay, well, I suppose when you're on three, you uh, get moved to the pioneer bracket, right?
Okay, we're up against dinos for whatever that's worth. Um, probably want this member. No, the rest of these particularly make sense. Um, Please turn to Adeline. Hopefully that's good enough. Hmm. Okay, yeah, they're just pretty much a uh, pioneer deck. New blocks. Why does this feel like an M. Hayashi build? <laughs> Just feels like an M. Hayashi deck.
<clears throat> okay. Hopefully being on the play will let us uh, steal a win here. The removal spell this hand gets us in a lot of trouble, but <clears throat> I think this hand at least has the possibility of closing the game very quickly. So Takes a hit for seven. <clears throat> Suspect they either need Reggie for the Great Henge or they're hoping to block Aline. Uh, doesn't feel like unless they have some type of sweeper here that they're going to have quite enough to survive. So. <laughs>
Not really. This is kind of slow for modern, <laughs> if we're being completely honest. Um, our deck is not doing well, but recommendation to our opponent would be do not play Pioneer decks in modern. It does not usually end well. All right, we're back for match five. We're on the play. Um, we'll try it. Uh, no one drop kind of little suspect, but we'll try it. Turn one, one swept teeth. Err, uh, mirror, uh, can be the mirror match. Well, that's kind of awkward timing. Not quite sure we're up against, um, uh, maybe Infect? But Infect doesn't usually play white, so I don't really know. Oh, we're up against Heliod. Okay, well. Okay, human. Definitely looks like Heliod combo. Or possibly Amelia combo? Man, we were playing against some weird crap. The I didn't read the Reflector Mage text. Okay, there's the other one, sure. Or a champion.
Ironically, I think we pass without doing anything. <clears throat> and because of these Orgog champions, we just lose because Helia just to grow gets to grow. Sure. Oh, for crying out loud. Yep. Ooh. Members in magistrate. Let's get kind of spells. Fire back. Nope. Man like mage, maybe. Magus of the Moon. Questionable. Uh, extraction specialist. Not really much matchup for it. Peacekeeper is kind of middling. Um, Lavinia matter. I mean, kind of, but also not really. Couldn't potentially catch a collected company or something, but not the best of cards in the matchup. Hopefully, an absolutely insane blistering start will be good enough. Leon? No. Spike feeder. Kitchen mix. Land, please. <clears throat> well. Things comes back. Turn three, collect a company. Confidant Birds of Paradise.
<clears throat> okay. Another cocoa. Heliop. Land, please. Okay, I'll also take that. Street. Right. No lander. Seems like a good start. Adeline Blood Moon. Five lands. Seriously? Okay. <laughs> hmm. I also can't make this stuff up.
All right, well, let's do a quick wrap on this <clears throat> rather ugly league. Um, so I think this showcases some of the problems that tribal decks somewhat have in the format if you're not playing subtlety, counter spell, uh, that kind of stuff, a.k.a. Merfolk. Um, the format's gotten faster. Like, Amulet Titan is just a nightmare for what we were doing. Heliod combo, I don't really count that for much of anything. Um, you know, it's a variant of a deck that's existed. It hasn't done particularly well in the format for quite some time. Uh, uh, somewhat like humans. Um, it was once a top tier deck. Now it's kind of been outgrown by the large portion of the format. Uh, so, you know, you have that. You have Malira combo. You have basically Yogmoss replaced them all. And then you have Kitchen Finks, Vis Viscera Seer, all that nonsense. Um, Life Gain generally outpaces aggressive decks, especially like that. So, looking at the other two matchups, we, we played against Dinosaurs, which is basically a Pioneer deck, and we only barely beat that. And then we played against Mono Blue Tron, which is a kind of slow mopey control deck that has certain cards that are problematic. Worm Coil Engine, Walking Ballista, um, etc. So, not the most awe-inspiring first league for humans if we were to make this the fe channel feature deck. Um, certainly, the, the one nice thing about humans is humans has an almost infinite ability to adapt with hate cards and different configurations and things that it can do. Um, so, not ready to give up on the deck yet, but that was certainly a very poor first showing. Um, you know, one of the problems with humans is it's a low lane count deck. It has four Aether Vial. Um, drawing Aether Vial not in your opening hand is problematic. Uh, the deck, at least this configuration of the deck, lacks significant one drop pressure. You have a glut of two drops, a glut of three drops. Um, and while a deck like Merfolk kind of makes that work, you know, we still saw our best draws involve either Champion of the Parish or Noble Hierarch. Um, positives from this league does have some still powerful not draws. Negatives from this league, I'm not sure humans has the power to consistently compete. Um, if you have your very good draws, you can potentially compete against a lot of decks in the format, but there is still, despite the loss of Fury, you still have Unholy Heat, Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, Orcus Bowmasters, Ren and Six, um, Solitude, Fu uh, not Fury obviously anymore, um, Living In, you know, there's a multitude of things that this deck needs to compete against to be relevant, and it would certainly require some more work to figure out if that is possible. Um, We'll obviously run back humans a couple of times, give Jund a few spins, um, see so kind of go from there. Um, you know, one of, one of the problems with playing tier two and tier two and a half strategies, tier three strategies, in a format like modern is if you're not playing the top five, top ten decks, it can be hard to consistently beat most things. Um, take a deck like Burn that once was one of the crowning decks of the modern format, and it feels like it continues to slide in power level. Sure, it can be competitive, but it's not the best, not as good as it once was. Um, humans is kind of in that boat along with, you know, Merfolk and uh, Slivers and all these other, you know, spirits, tribal decks that just don't seem like it has quite the power to compete in Modern. But like I said, we won't rush to judgment quite yet. I know it's had some recent results that have been promising and this league was certainly just basically if you could line up a bunch of bad decks for the stack to face um, we faced three relatively bad matchups and kind of got dumpstered by a few select cards out of Mono Blue Tron so kind of hard to take too much away from this league but was not encouraging to say the least but if you like modern content don't forget to like comment subscribe hope to see you for our next video